Good morning everyone. Welcome to Laser Technologies course. Myself Dr. B. M. Krishna Marisarla working at Department of Physics IIT Jodhpur. In this Laser Technologies course, we will deal with fundamentals of lasers and their applications and types of lasers, generation of short and ultra short pulses using Q switching and mode locking techniques. We will introduce nonlinear optics, mainly focus on second and third order nonlinearities. We will introduce a different laser interferometric techniques and laser spectroscopic techniques. So, lasers is a driving force for current and future technologies. With the laser, you have different applications, medical application, they have medical applications, industrial applications, and device applications, security applications, they will be used in different accelerators and ultra short pulses will be used to generate the electron beams. Laser covers wide spectrum of the applications. So laser is a, a not only a driving force, it changes the technology in the world in a many aspects. In this slide you can see lasers involved in many areas for example enforcement and scientific technology research so there we, there are laser fingerprint detection forensic science spectroscopy laser ablation laser scattering microscopy and meteorology these are the laser based applications and these lasers will be used in defense and security purposes so like lasers can be used as a to mark the targets guiding the ammunitions missiles electro optical countermeasures and blinding the troops in the medicine and healthcare side these lasers will be utilized to make a bloodless surgeries and kidney stone treatments, dermatology, ophthalmology, dentistry, neurology will be depending on the lasers for a different applications for, and tissue repairs and cosmetology. So these technologies were changed because of the laser and also these lasers will be utilized in commercial and entertainment. So laser printers, optical discs, barcode readers, thermometers, laser pointers, 3D holograms, laser light shows and these lasers also utilized for decorations. So nowadays laser is a common tool for many applications. So in principle if you make a triangle a laser as a center, it will serve the purpose for a different aspects in the society like health sciences for all the surgical, most of the surgical and ophthalmology and dentistry and as we discussed and for security purpose you can use for a navigation guidance and control for the communications you, you will use the lasers for example in the optical fiber communications you can couple the light signals, the laser signals through optical fibers. So in the communication purpose for the weapon systems, for engineering and science and technology, so you require lasers to study the fundamental properties for the material processing and industries it requires for manufacturing process control and diagnosis. Okay. There are lot, lot, lot of applications and also in the future we will come with the many more applications so the laser technologies 
it changing the the society in a different ways as we discuss so in the industries mostly depending on the process control exploration extraction maintenance and surveillance you you have wide variety of security and defense applications and in the environment you need a we have a continuous emissions like we have any toxic emissions so you can monitor those emissions and air pollutions and you can check the water quality and atmospheric monitoring can be done using lasers so healthcare you already we already discussed many surgeries and also you can do different types of analysis like blood analysis breath analysis and you can check the hospital air qualities in the life sciences you can do many things in the transportation so you can check the engine design designs a power optimization vehicle emissions jet fuel control so is countless applications were there with the laser so laser technology is change change the world so currently we have different power lasers are available so it it ranges from milliwatt to petawatt so milli means 10 power minus 3 kilo means 10, 10 power 3 mega 10 power 6 giga 10 power 9 tera 10 power 12 a peta 10 power 15 watt so now in the current day technologies we are able to get hexawatts 10 power 18 watt so we have wide range of lasers available for different applications okay so now we are going to study a fundamentals of lasers so we start with the optical absorption so what is optical absorption so when you have a light a light is nothing but a stream of photons these photons interact with the materials or matter so matter consists of atoms and molecules so these atoms have different energy states so when this photon interact with this atoms atoms will get excited so that means atoms get the energy from the photons and they will vibrate or they will rotate so they will be get energized and they have excitation so that means they will go to higher excited state by absorbing a photon that you call is a optical absorption so the frequency of photons is new the energy of photon is nothing but e equals to h nu now you take a simple system so you have two energy levels the lower energy level and upper energy level the the gap between the energy levels is called energy gap of the system that is represented as e g when photon interacts with this system the photon energy of h nu which is equal to energy gap or more than the energy gap then only the optical absorption can takes place so this energy will be transferred to the electrons and the electrons will go to higher states so that is called optical absorption if the photon energy is less than the energy gap there is no transition takes place this photon is uninteracted with the material and it comes out as a a same photon now you come up with the different photon energies so that can excite the electrons at a different level of your energy bands go to higher states so in this case you always a excited photon or your input photon energy has to be greater than your energy gap so now materials we have different types of materials so now you in the solid state materials you divide into three types metals semiconductors and insulators depending upon their conductivity so metals doesn't have a band gap so that the electrons also available in our conduction band in the semiconductors you have a, a smaller energy gap within the range of few electron volts means like 
one electron volt in the range of one electron volt in the insulators the energy gap is large is more than four electron volts so now you come up with the photon the minimum small energy is required to exceed the valence band or you can call the exit the electron these are actually these two bands are overlapping you require a very small energy to excite the electrons in this band so in the conductors it's small energy is enough to make excitation but in the semiconductors you require the energy at least with the gap of energy in the two bands for the insulators you come up with the energy of the same photon what you used in the metals and the semiconductors you cannot exit the electron to conduction band okay so this way you can see you have a lot of conduction electrons in the metal so that's why you metals are very good conductors and semiconductors is like a kind of a switch when you photo exit now you create a electrons in the conduction band behaves like a metal and if you don't interact with the photon or any extra electric field or, or giving any energy to the system it behaves like insulator in the insulator you require to have a huge photon energies to exit into conduction band so these insulators are poor, poor conductors so their conductivity is very low Okay, I will stop here. So we will discuss more about optical absorption in our next class. Thank you.